topic I want to talk about is Jesus paid it all. Amen. We know that God paid our sins. He did everything. He went on the cross. He took care of us. Amen. So today, God says, share with my people. I want you to tell them this parable that's in the Bible. So I'm going to share with you. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. And uh, starting from the 25th verse, Luke 10, starting from the 25th verse. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, what it, what it is written in the law, how readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and with all thy, and, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answer right, this do, and thou shalt live. Amen. I'll continue um, later on. But here it is. This lawyer came tempted Jesus, asking him all these questions. What can I do to have eternal life? Amen. And we know that the topic of this, this is where Jesus talked about the good Samaritan, right? If you read further on, he talks about the good Samaritan and some other people that we'll talk about later. But here it is. He's asking him, he wants eternal. So this is how, you know, the conversation started between Jesus and the lawyer. He wants to know. I need to have what you're talking about. So in other words, he wants eternal life. Little did he knew that eternal life is not earned. You see what I'm saying? He didn't know it's a gift that is gained through salvation. It's something you can't earn it. It's something you must confess. You must gain it through salvation, through having a relationship with God. So here it is. He's saying this man, he is something else. So Jesus asked him, he turned it around on him because apparently, you know, he knew. He, this man is a lawyer. He knows about the law of the land. He knows what he needs to do. He knows the law of Moses' law. So he knows what Jesus said in order for you to do this. God told him you have to love each other. You must love God with all your heart. What was, some, what was the com commandment? You know, love God with everything in you. Love your neighbor as thyself. But now he wants to, you know, he don't want to work for it. He don't want to get saved, but he wants to earn. Because, you know, some people, they always want to take the shortcut, like, can I have it this way? I don't want to go through the process. I don't want to. It's too long. I want it now. So that's why he's trying to earn it. But God is saying, no, not so. All right. So anyway, here it is now. So now he turned around because now he already knew that Jesus is onto him. So he turned it around and now he's asking Jesus, who is my neighbor? So now he's still picking at, he's still picking at him, you know, he already told him, he, he, he read it, he knew it, and now he's asking him, who is my neighbor? It's right here in the scripture. Really, who is my neighbor? And you know, the culture in the Jews, Jews only consider Jews as their neighbors. You see what I'm saying? So he knew where Jesus was going. Jews, if you're another Jew, then we are neighbor. If you're not a Jew, we have no dealings with you. Is that, what, is that right? So notice how the lawyer implied with the question that he had fulfilled the law by, you see what I'm saying, three things, to follow Jesus. Kindly, he said, so Jesus said, you already knew. I'm reading what the scripture said. So he said, you already knew. But he said to Jesus, but in other words, he's saying to Jesus, but I've done so many things with my Jew people, my neighbors. I've helped them. I've, I've been kind to them. I've, I've done all these things for them. I've showed them. I've helped them in every area. So therefore, now, is that, am I qualified to get eternal life because I've shown kindness? Because I've shown respect to my fellow Jew? Isn't that enough for me to earn, to gain eternal life? Yeah, Jesus said no. So Jesus knew exactly what he was talking. So Jesus said, okay, go with me. All right, let's go to verse 30. Let's go to verse 30. And it reads, and Jesus answering said, this is where the parable comes in. He said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho and fell among thieves. 
which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, he came and looked on him, passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Jesus now asked, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And of course he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said unto him, go and do likewise. My God, my God, right there. He says it right here, see? So now Jesus knew exactly what, it, what, what he was trying to get at. Jesus knew. So Jesus said, okay, let me share this parable with you. In other words, Jesus was trying to tell him who he was. So I'm going to break it down for you first in the natural realm, and then I'm going to break it down for you in the spiritual realm. All righty? So here is a, why did Jesus chose the journey. Why did he say from Jerusalem to Jericho? When you study history, that journey right there was dangerous. It was a dangerous place to travel. It was a lot of crime, a lot of um, thieves, robbers attacking all the travelers that passed, all the travelers that passed along that path. They attacked them, they, they robbed them, they leave them half dead or probably already dead and some of them half dead. Some were, I mean, beaten so here it is now but Jesus, Jesus chose this path a place that's full of crime that you have to be careful when you walk when you pass when you go through this 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 highway this way amen it was so dangerous that they called it the bloody pass that's what they call it back in the days. They call it the bloody past. That's how bad it was. And you, some of you can identify what I'm talking about. All right. So here it is. The robbers attacked this man on his way. On the way, on his way. He was going through and they attacked him, robbed him, beat him up. I mean, really, really bad. They took everything from him. The Bible said he was left there half dead. My God, my God. Well, here it is now. Then the first person that showed up, I'm going to teach today. I'm not going, I'm just going to, I want you to listen to me. The first person that showed up was the priest. All right. The priest showed up. Uh, the Bible said that the priest walked on the other side. He didn't even look over there. He just like, look, he saw, okay, he's hurting. I saw blood. I saw everything. He don't even look like he's moving. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe the priest is thinking, see, we don't really don't know, but I'm thinking that he's probably saying, hey, I don't know. Maybe these, 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 um, robbers they if i stop maybe they're hiding somewhere and then when i stop to help maybe they'll attack me and, and, and rob me and beat me up so hey maybe I'm, I'm not going i'm not getting involved but i'm just gonna go on my merry way i have things to do i have to tend to the church i have to do all these things so i'm just gonna go on my merry way right or maybe he's thinking that listen you know in the law the priest cannot touch any dead bodies we know that right it's considered unclean so maybe that's what he's thinking well even if i wanted to help i can't touch him because it's considered unclean because i have to do the things for uh, the temple and i can't touch anything that is dead and i can't touch anything that has with the blood in it i, I no 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 i can't so you know what I, i'm just going to go i'm just going to leave it alone all right 
So maybe that's what the priest was thinking when the Bible says that he went on his merry way. So he avoided him altogether. Then here it is now, we have the Levite. And we know the Levi, the descendants from Israel, you know, Jacob, his son Levi, and his descendants, they were, the Levi were the ones that helped to assist the priest in the temple, right? They helped with opening the gates, closing the gates, you know, things of that nature. They helped a lot of, they helped to do some things in the temple, all right? So here it is now, the Levi came, he saw that. Levi saying the same thing, looking at him, it's like, mm -mm, I don't know if I should do it, you know, plus I don't, mm -mm, I'm not going over there, you know, I have to do things, so I, I have things to do, I don't have time right now, this happened so many times, I'm just going to ignore him, I'm, I'm, I'm going about my business, I just, I just got to go, I don't have time for that right now, so I'm going along my, I'm going along my merry way. Now, here is it now, another a man, Samaritan, the Bible said the Samaritan now came and he saw the man laying there on the side of the street and he stopped. The Samaritan, he stopped. Amen. And he helped this poor man that was dying. He helped him. So right there, the Bible is telling us that this Samaritan, he had compassion on this man. Amen. He was, this, this Samaritan man was selflessness. He had selflessness in him. He was not selfish at all, right? Because he helped him. He carried him on his, on his, his, his animal, whatever he was on. He carried him um, out of danger to a safe place. Not only that, the Bible said he was generous to this man. Amen. So here it is now. It's so, in, you know, when I look, the, when I look in the scripture and I'm reading, I'm saying, it's so interesting how Jesus used these three characters in the Bible. Why did he choose to use, <laughs> why did he choose to use these three? He could have used anyone else, but he, he chose these three to explain what he's trying to tell the lawyer, to tell the lawyer exactly what he wants to reveal to him. Amen. So this Samaritan, he took a chance. He risked his life for this man. He risked his, he, he, his reputation could have been ruined. He took time out of his busy schedule. He said, I, I have somewhere to go. I have, maybe he, the Samaritan man had a business meeting, something of importance. Maybe he, he's, he's going to visit his family. Someone is sick or something. I don't know, but you could tell he was on his way. He was on a journey to somewhere that's important, but he stopped and he got involved. He said, I can't leave this dying man on the street. His heart was for God, because that's what God says, that we should love one another, that we should help one another in spite of our situation, in spite of how busy we are. You see what I'm saying? So here is this man. He's saying, I have other things to do, but I am going to reschedule. I am going to rearrange my schedule to help this man. So, so what happened? I'm going to be late for the meeting, but at least I saved a life. Do you see what I'm saying? So I may not have all the money, but at least I help this man. I can say that I say, Jesus, my heart was reached out to this man and I did a good deed. I helped someone. Do you see what I'm saying? This man is, so Jesus is saying to us today, who is your neighbor? Do you help the people that just only here? You have some people only help their family members only. They only share news or good news or help financially or whatever to only the people that's in their family. They don't help anyone else. I don't know if you ever know anyone like that. You see what I'm saying? They have people. They do have people like that. Well, anyway, this man, he had so much compassion. And Jesus is saying that's the same thing with us. We need to have compassion on people. We need to have compassion on, 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 the, on the homeless. We need to have compassion. Even when we pass those people on the roadside, sometimes we don't know who we are entertaining. They can be angels. Some of us say, I'm not giving no money. He probably going to use it to do what we don't know what the people they're going through. That man and that woman that you see sometimes on the street, sometimes they, their, their house burnt down. They didn't mean that they're taking drugs. Sometimes they lose their job and they're homeless. We're all away from being homeless at times. 
especially those of us who live from paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> you could go the next morning and say, listen, um, I'm sorry, we, we, we just have to let you go. Then what then? You see what I'm saying? So we, we cannot judge people. Let your spirit, let your discernment kick in and say, okay, okay, God, I'm going to bless these people. But what God is saying to us, witness to people. Winning souls for Christ. A lot of people say, I'm handing out tracts. I'm giving this. I'm telling people. I'm just handing out the tracts. But that does not mean that you impact the pe person. That does not. Even though you hand out the tract, did you get involved? Did you tell them who Jesus is? Sometimes they really, they don't understand it. Did you take time to explain to them? Do you see what I'm saying? So here it is now, this, this man right now. So Jesus is saying, so let's go back. I just want to break it down to you for you in the spiritual realm. I hope you're following. Are you following what I'm saying so far? All right, so here it is. I'm just going to break it down for you. This good Samaritan with Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the good Samaritan. Do you see? He represents Jesus. You see, Jesus sacrificed for you. He did all these things for you. He's telling this man, listen. Let, let me break it down. He says, this journey that we're on, that's called life, we all know that we have a certain time on this earth. There will come a time when your life will be expired. So it's what you do in between those times, that's what matters. The day you were born until the day you die. In between, it that's what matters. How do you treat people? How do you love people? How do you do, you know, how do you spend that time? Do you understand what I'm saying? So here is this. Jesus is saying to him, listen, I am the good Samaritan. See, I don't know prejudice. I don't know what it's like, even though the Jew and the Gentile, the Jew and the Samaritans had no dealings. They hated each other. The Jew hated the Samaritans and the Samaritan hated Jew. And he started from back when, if you study your Bible. So they had no dealings. They were very prejudiced against each other. But Jesus is saying it's not about just your culture. Some people don't like to talk to people, even if they're from a different country, they have a different accent. They don't even want to associate it. Well, they talk about them. They're, who are they? You know, you get what I'm saying? You can't judge people on those things if you really have the love of Christ in your heart. So Jesus, I am the good Samaritan. Amen, somebody. And here it is now. That journey represents, he says that from, it was a terrible path. Remember I said it was dangerous. In this world, there are danger. In this world, we have crime. We have every single day, there are people killing people, people kidnapping. I mean, there's so many things. It's a dangerous world that we live in right now. And that's what God is saying to him. We, even though we're living the journey, the journey is dangerous. We have Jesus Christ to protect us. He is our protector. He is our provider. He is our healer. Whatever you're going through this path, this journey that we're on, that he ordained us to be on this journey to bless his people. He sent us. We're on earth. He chose us that we may go and witness and tell others about him. That's our purpose, our life, our God-given purpose is to win source for Christ is to talk about him is to get people in his kingdom and we're on a journey until when you finish your journey and then you go back home with him if you do according to what he says and we know there's a hell and there's a heaven some people won't believe me but there is do you see what I'm saying so that that's the journey the path that we must take Amen, somebody. And the priests and the Levi, they represent law. They represent religion. That's why I don't do religion. I don't believe in man-made religion. You can't wear jewelry. You can't wear certain um, things. You can't wear pants. You I know I'm going to get a lot of slap, but I don't care. It's the true man-made religion. They tell all these things, but it's not about religion. Some people are so stuck in religion, they can't even see straight. They condemn people, they judge people, they talk about people, they have these long skirts. I'm not knocking anyone, and they're doing all these things, but yet, where is the love of God in your heart? Where is that love? You pass someone on the side hungry, you pass someone that's naked, where is the love of Christ? But you're so holy, you go to church every Sunday, you go to church, you go to Bible study, where is that love? The prostitutes on the street, you're not too good? You can't talk to them? 
the, the, the gang baggers on the street side out there, the, the strippers, whoever, you can't have a conversation about Christ with them because you think you're better than them. You're not. News flash. No one is better. You are created just like them. God created you. Who are you to judge God's people? Do you see what I'm saying? But where is that love to help? My God, my God. And God, and they're so in their religion, they're so focused on, on going to do the church work. They're so focused that they forgot that they're talking about the duties. I do so much stuff, but where is, ah, somebody, are you hearing me today? That's what it represents. You need to have a relationship with Christ. It's a relationship where you read the Bible, you talk to him daily, you have conversation with him daily. You Do you understand what I'm saying? You listen to him, he'll speak to you, he guides you, he protects you. Do you hear me? It's not about man-made religion. That man is laying on the side of the street, but because of religion, it stopped them from helping that man. Oh, you're not hearing me today. You're not hearing me. Ha. And here it is, but we already know Jesus is the good Samaritan. Amen, somebody. Jesus is saying to this man, listen, I know that this man is laying half dead in the street. I know what the law says. I know what they said, but I come to give life more abundantly. When you're sick, I'm going to help you. Cry out to me. By my stripes, you are healed. Whatever is it that you're going through, I'm not too busy for you. He said, call me in the midnight hour. He said, call up upon me. I will hear you. If when you're in trouble, call upon me. I'm not too busy for you. Come on, somebody. I will reschedule everything for you. I love you so much that I'm here to protect you. I said nothing will harm you. Do you hear? And that's what Jesus is saying to this lawyer. He said that I came to give it all. I came to bless my people. I came to protect them. Are you hearing me? I'm not prejudiced. I love everyone. I don't care who they are. Yes, they make mistakes. Yes, they messed up. But those are my children. If they would come back to me and repent and say, Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord. I didn't mean to turn away from you. Come back, Lord. I'm sorry. The Lord said he stretches arms out and he said, come back to me, my daughter. Come back to be my son. It's nothing that you can do that will stop my love for you. My love is unconditional. Come back. And that's what God is trying to tell this man. I'm a God of compassion. I don't judge. I, call, I have compassion on my people. You see, they're humans. They make mistakes. But I am their father. And I'm going to forgive them no matter what. I am going to, as long as they repent, a true repentance, I'm going to forgive them. And that's what he's saying right here. And in verse 34, look at this. On the morrow he departed and he took out two pence and gave them to the host. And he said, take care of him. He even hired somebody to take care of this injured man. He said, I've got you. I've paid it all for you. I'm paying up all of your debts. I'm paying up all of everything that you've done. I am doing that for you. I've already done it for you. That's why you don't worry about it. It's already taken care of. The day they lay me out. Oh God, and they crucify me. And I said, here it is. I'm doing it all for you. Everything that you've done. 
care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. My God, my God, what is God saying? He brought it into an inn. He brought it into an inn. He put him, he said, okay, let me rent this place. And he paid the money, everything for that inn, a couple of days. And he said, whatever, if he need to stay longer, whatever it is, I will pay it. When I come back, I will repay it. God is saying, whatever you've done, God is saying, when I come back, I'm coming back for you. This means the second coming of Christ. I'm coming back. Are oh, you not hear me? I already paid it all. I'm coming back to your it. Don't worry about how extra long you stay. Don't worry about it. I'm the Lord already did it for you because I'm coming back to repay. Oh my God, my God. The second coming of Christ. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me? And number, let's read it on. My God, my God. And he said, which now of these? And he says, is your neighbor? And he said unto him, ah, the one that fell among the thieves. Thieves right there represents Satan, the devil himself. The Bible said he come to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. He's a thief. That's why he sneak. He's a sneak. He sneak through windows. He sneak through back doors. He cannot come up front. You see, he, he, he's a fraud. Do you see what I'm saying? He, he wants to mimic everything God does. He try to imitate. Do you see what I'm saying? He's a liar from the pit of hell. The Bible says he's a father of all lies. Do you hear me? So that's what it means. The robber come to take away your joy. See, on this journey, that you're on the journey of life, there come times when the enemy comes in and he steals your health. You're not hearing me. Another time he comes in, he can't get you there and he steals your finances. Are you hearing me? Another time he comes and he rob you of your joy. He rob you of your peace. He rob you of your family. He rob you in your marriage. He rob you with your children. He's a thief. He is a robber. But God said to tell you on this journey, he said, keep the faith. I am Jesus Christ, the good Samaritan. I will never leave you or not forsake you. I got you. Everything is paid in full. You don't have to worry how much. You don't have to worry about salvation. How much does it cost? My God said it's free. Come on in. Come on in, he said it's free. You don't, it's not something you own. My God had compassion. If you're not saved, God is merciful. He's compassionate. He's a loving God. He said, come to me with all of your burdens, all of your troubles. Oh, let me make it lighter for you. Lay it at my feet. My God, my God, I'm talking to somebody today. I'm talking to someone today. So today, God is saying, in spite of who they are, take a chance in life. Take risk sometimes. It's okay. So that means you're stepping out in faith. Get out of your comfort zone. You've been in the comfort zone for too long. Get out. Step out of the boat. Step out. Oh, my God, my God. Are you hearing me today? Help someone. Get out. Help someone. Are you hearing me? Be a blessing to someone. Ah, sometimes we're so busy in life that we don't see others. We don't see anyone. You're so blindfolded, you can't see anything but you. It's all about you. It's all about your career. It's all about your husband. It's all about your children. It's just you, 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 you. You have no time for anyone else. No time. I pray today that God convict your heart. I pray the Holy Ghost arrest you today to help to give. Don't matter. Don't do things for people and expect things from them. Don't do things with motives. People, that's when God says, it's not a blessing. Because if you do for me and talk about it, and you do for me, and you say this, and you do for this one, and talk about it, and do, it's not it. The Bible said, let that right hand know what the left is doing. You don't have to tell the whole world. Get your blessing in the secret place. Let God exalt you openly. You know, you shouldn't have motives. When you're doing something from the heart. Do you see? Because God did it for you. That's why he said, how ungrateful. He did it for you. He died. Who does that? 
He did it for you, so do it for others. Help others. When God bless you, be a blessing. Be a blessing to someone, amen? And let me close out with this. Let me go to Matthew 25, verse 43. Amen? And the Bible says, I was a stranger and he took me not in. Naked and he clothed me not. Sick and in prison and he visited me not. Do you see what God is saying today? And they ask him, when did that happen, Lord? We didn't see you naked. That's what the Bible says. He said, when were you hungry? When were you thirsty? When were you sick? When were you in prison? I didn't see all of that. But he said unto them, then shall he, he answer them and said, verily I say unto you, in so much as you did it not to one of these, these least these, he did it not to me. And these shall go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous have life eternal. So God is saying, some people are looking for Jesus to ring that doorbell. If Jesus ring that doorbell one day, you see how excited you get. You see you move everything around. You start getting this. You start getting, when Jesus sent his people, his representative of him, treat them the same way. They represent Christ, every believer. So not just, some people, you, you look up to people more than you look to others. Oh, that bum, oh, that one, oh, that one. But then when the rich person or whoever is it in society or whoever, you treat them like royalty. That's not cool as believers. You treat everyone equal. Treat everyone as you want to be treated. All right, so that's what I have for you today. I pray you are blessed by this word, amen. I pray you are inspired. I pray be like Jesus, the good Samaritan, help someone. Never ever be too busy. Sometimes you're in the supermarket. Sometimes you're there and you're shopping. There's someone behind you that probably even have like $5 or $2. Sometimes just look around. God will let you know who to help. I'm not saying everyone though, but he will let you know. All right? So be a blessing to others, all right? God already paid it for us. It's paid in full. Thank you for watching our Greater Power International Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel so you won't miss a single video. And please share with family and friends. If this ministry has impacted you, please support us with your giving. If you would like to become a member of our ministry, please contact us at fellowship at Greater Power intlministries.org or you can call us at 470-535-2455. Thank you again for watching. God bless you.